that's my final day of hiking. Forecast isn't great, it's six in the morning. I woke up about an hour ago. I was sitting watching some YouTube. Because <laughs> nobody else is on the internet, on the uh, Wi-Fi, camp Wi-Fi. You can actually catch up with some YouTube videos. And I'm just going to take my time today. I'm going to get up, probably do what I always do, first things first. And that'll be to get the kettle on and have a brew. But for the moment, I'm going to catch up with my YouTube videos. <laughs> well, not my YouTube videos, but at the moment. I was in no rush, the weather forecast was pretty poor, so I put the bed away, filled up the kettle, got myself a coffee, and just kind of dottered around really, opened the door, braved the midges, and eventually I pulled myself away from the campsite and drove along the short distance, which was on the way back home anyway, to the start of the walk. Right, that's me arrived at my destination, Salachin, I think it's called, something like that, anyway. I've managed to park up, it's a wee road, there's a small lay-by. Don't know if you can hear that, it's, it's, I'm really not wanting to leave the van. It's not forecast very good, and this walk, there's a few things I'm a bit concerned about. One of them's a river crossing right at the top of the glen, so I have to do about four or five kilometres up the glen. I don't ascend very high, very much at all, and it's straight up the mountain. And it's a rocky, pathless mountain, very steep, so I'll have to be careful. But I am <laughs> most concerned about the river crossing. So, I need to get out of this gear and get my waterproofs on. Um, I'm always up for a challenge, so I think that's certainly what this is going to be. Right, let's get uh, let's get cracked on. <coughs> get my wee hat for the rain, and we'll get cracked on. Wah. There is a small lay-by at Salakin, and that's where I parked up. And surprise, surprise, there was no other hikers or vans or or cars there, which didn't really surprise me. It was <laughs> forecast was pretty miserable, and waterproofs were uh, on from the start, as it was raining at this at this point. As I was leaving the van, got my gear together, and yeah, started on my merry way up Glengower. Well, as with many walks along the glen, there's a nice path here. Uh, it takes me along to the base of the mountain, and I can see the mountain. You'll not be able to see it, I'll spin your camera around in a minute. But you can see the mountain over there, and it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. There's a wee bit of uh, rain, it is raining, and uh, I'm quite sheltered here in the glen. I'm going past this loch, <laughs> and I am getting quite concerned because the loch level even looks quite high. And certainly the, r the river further down where I walked past it was, uh, wasn't low to say the least, so... Fingers crossed I can find somewhere to cross it, but at the moment the cloud's just shrouding the top. You never know, it might lift, or it might get worse, but so far so good. Right, let's get going, let's see if I can uh, get across this river once I get up the glen a wee bit. Well, the rain's reduced to a wee bit of a spitting at the moment, which is lovely. This, this Land Rover track does make for a nice, fast progress up the glen. And there's the hill over over my shoulder, Ben Nahua, I think it's pronounced. And you can see it's quite rocky and rugged, and there's no paths up here. I'm just going to have to be careful which way I go up. I'm not sure whether I'm going to go up this rocky face, which is less steep, or just straight up the skyline. It all depends on whether I can cross this river. As you can see, the, the tracks have lots of big puddles like this in it on the way along. So it has been pretty wet, and I can hear the roar of the river. <laughs> Uh, the River Gower, I think it'll be. This is Glengower. And back down behind me, I can see the mountains. I suppose towards, towards Glencoe and Balhulish and these sort of places in south of there. But it's lovely. It's not too bad. It is kind of atmospheric coming through these places when the weather's not uh, perfect. It's atmospheric. That's, that's the best way to put it, I think. I like it. As long as the wind doesn't pick up too much, although it does look like the clouds are scudding across the summit, so I know it will be breezy up there. I'll have to change my hat and what have you. Anyway, enough yabbering on. Time to plough through this puddle and see if I can get a crossing point for the river. As I continued up the glen, I soon came across an old ruin of a of a cottage or steading. And it was the only ruin that I came across on my, my journey up and down the glen, to be honest with you. 
you usually find a, a few more of these old drones kicking about in these in these glens out in the west coast. But yeah, it was uh, it wasn't great. The weather was still it was still a bit changeable, rainy to say the least. But I could still see my objective, and the, the mountain still had a cap of cloud in it on the top. But I continued onwards. So I've come to a wee high point on the path. Let me put these down. Um, and you get a good view of the mountain from here. And because I, I know it's going to be pathless, I'm kind of scoping out the, the mountain as I can see it now because you never know when this quag might come down. I can see some gullies sort of psych dissecting the, the rocky crags and what have you. So it shows me that there's a way up that uh, looks pretty safe, although it does look quite ferny <laughs> from here. I hope I'm not uh, wading through the ferns up there. I might be wrong, I'm a bit too far away to tell whether that is ferns or not, but it certainly looks, it's either very green grass or uh, lots of ferns, but yeah, I can see at least sort of three quarters, two thirds of the way up the mountain anyway. And uh, that's it. There's a wee rocky knoll in the middle, which looks like it's quite steep. Maybe the difficulties lie there. But again, it looks like there's wee gullies and rakes going through it. So it's always nice to, it's always good to kind of take note when you can see the mountain because you never, <laughs> you never know when it's going to disappear. So anyway, first things first uh, is the, the the river to cross. So. Yeah, I think I'm nearly there. I think I'll drop down and cross the river, so let's go. I wasn't expecting to do much photography today, but as I dropped off the main path and down towards the river, there was this lovely lone dead tree. So I actually stopped there and took some pictures before I crossed the river. It was lovely. I'm probably here. I'm now down by the River Gower. And I'm glad I came down here, even if I don't cross it. This lovely old dead tree. I've tried to take some photographs of it, and... Uh, it's beautiful, it sticks out. Real, a, phot a photographer's uh, ideal tree, perhaps. Anyway, let's have a look at this river crossing. You see down below me, I'm going to try and get across here. It does look quite deep there, in the middle. It's not too bad, though. I've crossed a lot worse. I've tightened up my boots, put the internal gaiters <laughs> down as far as they can go. So, uh, yeah, this is where the walking poles come into their own as well. It's really useful. So I think I'm going to get across here, no bother at all. This is the rain start. Then it's the trudge across to the start of the hill. Right, anyway, let's give this a go. The River Gower certainly wasn't in spate today, but you always have to be careful. These rocks are always super slippy when you're going across, and I was, yeah, I was really happy that my walking poles they do make a big difference, especially when you're doing the river crossings. And you don't really get a, an idea of it from this footage, but when you're in the middle of these these wee rivers, uh, y there is a bit of depth to that water. There's maybe about a foot or a foot and a half if you were to slip and, you know, hit your head or what have you. So you have to be careful. And uh, I was glad when I reached the other side. Wow! Dry feet! <laughs> this bit here in the middle is about a foot and a half deep, but the internal gator certainly kept me dry. Which is grand, just hope it doesn't uh, <laughs> rise any, or I'll be stranded on the side of the river. But it's lovely right now, uh, up past this old, these old trees, across a bit of bog, to the start of the hill. Uh, it's nice to have dry feet, I was quite, uh, quite worried about that. So it was, especially when you're by yourself, you never know how, uh, how deep these rivers are going to be, but that wasn't too bad. Probably looks nothing on the camera, but when you're in the middle of the stream, <laughs> the water's flowing past you. Sometimes, uh, all these all thoughts run through your mind, but right, enough gabbering. Let's get up this mountain. Looks a bit steeper now. <laughs> there were some lovely old oak trees on the banks of the River Gower, and I half thought about stopping to take some photographs, but you know what? I had to had a mountain to get up, so I headed across some boggy ground to the base of the mountain, and I discovered when I reached the base of the mountain that greenness that I saw on the other side of the glen was indeed. Deep, deep ferns. I've started the climb, so this is the start of the mountain. Bena, Bena, hua ha, Bena, hua ha. It might be hooing and ha and me when I go up here. And uh, you can see there's uh, a few crags and what have you going up there. Lovely views back down from where I came. And then over this way, you can see over my shoulder, that's just one big rock, that's Garven of Ardnauer tops in the cloud at the moment, but you just see there's hardly any vegetation on that at all. It's just one big sloping rock. That's a fantastic mountain. I need to go back up there. I did it in the winter a few years ago and 
didn't get any views and I think that's one that I need to go back to. Anyway, back to this hill. It does look quite rocky as well. This, uh, there, is, there is ferns here, but there's also grass. And there is actually a path so far, which I wasn't expecting, which is good. So that will hopefully lead me in the right direction before I need to get the map and compass out. Right, let's go. Stop waffling, Murray. Let's get cracked on. Through the ferns I went, and I must admit, in the back of my mind, I was thinking that a tick check was going to have to happen later on, which I did. Um, but anyway, through the ferns, and I got a bit higher up the mountain, and it got a bit more breezy and exposed, so I took the cap off and put on my wee, my wee uh, woolly hat to keep my head and my napper warm, and continued up the mountain. There were some great views back down Glen Gower as well, which was uh, which was lovely. And the mountain ahead was starting to reveal itself, and also its steepness. Oh, look at that view. Well, there is a, a faint path that's coming and going up here and I feel okay considering this is my fourth day in the hills uh, this, is, this is actually the, the lowest corbett and I'm kind of glad it is to be honest with you Excuse me Anyway, I'm just below the steep steep section uh, This is I suppose the hardest pool and I think I'm going to go around to the right because over on the left here there's lots of crags so I'm just going to see what height I've made so far. I'm going to look at my GPS here and see how far I've come. Sometimes this is a bad idea. Where am I? Oh, 350 metres. I thought I'd maybe ascended more than that. <laughs> Note to self, don't get the GPS out until you can see the summit. You might be disappointed. Anyway, yes, uh, 400, 350 metres, should I say. And the summit of this is... 762 so less than halfway but i've done the long walk in and i think once i get up and over this point here it may get a bit easier so let's crack on up this steep section from this point onwards the path did disappear and you go round to the right and then yeah pretty soon after this point it gets really quite steep and steep grassy slopes and you have to make sure you're not coming up the rocky face and I found a wee bit of scrambling was required here because I'd, I'd taken a slightly more direct route up above uh, Glen Gower. And Ben Nahuaha, is, as I said, it was the, it's the lowest Corbett and it wasn't actually promoted to a Corbett until 1981 and I expect prior to that I would have seen very little footfall which is a shame because it's quite a rocky and impressive mountain. Anyway, up onto the main ridge, and as you can see, it was really exposed here, and the wind picked up, and I was hit with the full force of it. And uh, it wasn't it wasn't long before I entered up a bit higher and into the clag in the cloud, and there wasn't much views at all, just lots of rain and lots of wind. And I was glad when I was finally approaching the summit. At last. The top! Hurrah! Here we go! And here is the summit of... Benanuaha! And, uh, yeah, I'm quite tired now. This is my fifth Corbett in four days. And it's pretty miserable up here. As you can probably tell, it's peeing it down and it's windy! Woo! And there's another this is the lowest, as I said earlier, this is the lowest Corbett, <coughs> excuse me, and about two kilometres that way is the highest Graham, it's only a metre shorter than this, and I should really head over to there, but you know what, I'm not going to bother, because if it does get promoted, it gives me a good excuse to come back, and I'd probably come in from the other way, the same, up through those wonderful woodlands that I went up to the highest point in Ardgour yesterday, and to do it, it just gives me an excuse to come back, and it's miserable today, I'm tired, I've got another long walk out to get to get away, it's not, it's not going to get any better than this I think, I think the forecast is going downhill. So I'm going to head back down to the van now, get the ferry across to uh, to the Balahulish area, through Balahulish, over to Glencoe and home. And then I've got another adventure planned with the family in the van, so time to drop off here and get out of this wind and rain. Oh it's miserable. Ah.
I decided to come straight off the other side of the hill. Uh, that's me just in the breeze now, but it was just more shelter than coming down the ridge there. So just uh, if you look behind me there, that's where I've come down. And I'm coming down this shoulder now, if I swing round. There's Garven over there, that, I don't know if you'll make out the rocks, but it's just, just lots of slabs. And then away down over yonder, kind of where the locking is, just there. That's where my car is, so I need to drop down here. And then it's a long walk back out, but this is much nicer. It's a bit steep coming down this way, but it's, it's just nice to get out of that wind. I'm still pissing it down, however. <laughs> right, let's get down into Glen Gower and see if I can cross this, uh, this uh, the River Gower again. I'm going to cross it at a different point this time coming down this way, so let's hope I can do it. <laughs> Right, let's go. Oh, what will be waterfall under Garven there? And this is where I'm going to cross. Uh, let me see if I can get across down here. But I'll be putting the camera away. I might, I might put it on and tie it around my waist belt, but I'm going to try and hop onto that rock, that rock, and then over. Let's see how we go. I'll put you on here. Hip cam. First things first. Before I do that, I need to make sure my gaiters are tightened up. Let's see? <laughs> ah, for the time being, let's see here we go. Felt cam. I actually attached the camera to my hip belt of the rucksack. So I do apologise, the footage isn't, isn't great. <laughs> and I've speeded up, as you can see, because uh, I was being super careful crossing the, the River Gower. And I think it was actually an easier crossing here than it was on the way. The, the, these rocks are well better placed than on the way in. And I was soon across and, and glad to be on the, the right side of the river for the walk back. Hurrah! Dry feet! <laughs> there we go. What's that done? Now the long walk back. Ah! If anything, the rain actually got heavier as I came off the hill and it was a long trudge back along that puddle-ridden path and I was really, really glad when I got back to the van. I was looking forward to getting the heater on, changed out of these wet clothes and into the dry clothes before heading, heading home via the Koran ferry. It was going to be a long drive. But it didn't actually take too long to get to the Koran ferry from Salakin where I was parked. It's only a few kilometres down the road from the, the ferry terminal. <laughs> anyway, I soon arrived there and there was a queue uh, of cars waiting to get on the ferry, which was on the other side of the crossing when I arrived. So it gave me a bit of time to reflect on my trip today. Whilst waiting for the ferry back over, I was going to say the mainland, but we are actually on the mainland. i do my uh, little what can I give you? What tips can I give you from Benna Uam? Uam? Was it Benna Uaha? Uaha! Benna Uaha! <laughs> so, I think tip number one waterproof boots. The approach path is literally one big puddle, and yeah, you would definitely, definitely, definitely regret not having waterproof boots. Tip number two is related to waterproof boots is have trousers with internal gaiters or wear gaiters and that's more for the river crossing. Uh, it wasn't too bad today and it's been peeing it down. So yeah, gaiters, waterproof shoes, definitely come in useful. Related to the river crossing, tip number three, take some poles, walking poles it is. I know they're not cool, they're pretty, yeah, <laughs> very, very untrendy but they will save you when you're going across those slippery boulders and what have you in that river crossing. Tip number four, check the forecast if it is due to be even more monsoony weather than it is at the moment. Yeah, don't go. It's a long walk in to find out that you can't cross that to cross the river. Tip number five, you could potentially bike in. Mm, I'm a bit dubious about that. It's certainly not road bike worthy. Definitely, definitely not a road bike worthy. If you've got a good mountain bike and what have you then you could maybe do that it's not you wouldn't be sitting in the saddle very long though and you would be getting off to push uh, what other tips final tip last tip of the day don't bring anything to clean your boots with because of that path being one big puddle it shines them up beautifully for when you get back to the car anyway hope you've enjoyed that until the next time stay safe out there and thanks for watching
Thank you.